each vehicle, and the vehicle is now driving itself. It will do the steering, it will do the turn signals, it will do the braking, accelerating, and if it's raining, it will even engage the windshield wipers. Cool. So right now, we are passengers just like you. Yeah. <laughs> On your screen back there, you'll see um, that 3D image that I was talking about. So it's real time on there. Um, you can see the, the car that just passed us, the car in front of us, the one behind us. So the orange stuff is uh, stuff that moves. Exactly. And blue is stationary. Correct. Very nice. <laughs> you usually have to explain it to most people. <laughs> it's definitely a question we get asked. Oh, there's another self driving car. Yeah. So, number right. right, we'll do the right hand turn. There you go. Now we got this truck on the lot of traffic. Thing. It is Pittsburgh. Right. Exactly. It is it's construction stop, and stop crap. on the road to unload a truck. So just like cruise control, I can easily take over by using the accelerator, brake, or the steering wheel. It'll bring control right back to me, and then I could just put it right back in as soon as we're back in. Just like so, go right back in it. What's uh, what's like the hardest thing that it does, or like that's, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, construction's one big one. Um, just because it's so complex and there's so many different options of what you can do there. Yeah. Um, just like a, as a human, you kind of don't even know what they want you to do. So to teach a car is just a very um, complex situation. And then um, non-compliant drivers are another one for sure. What does non-compliant drivers mean? Um, just like not following the rules. Exactly. You know, not stopping at a stop sign or not using the proper lane to go straight when it's a turn-only lane. Um, blowing through a red light. Um, why did you Why did you take over just now? So just like that uh, unloading truck that we passed. Yeah. We had a van that was unloading as well. So oh. we were just queued up right behind there and stopped until I would have taken it over. Oh, it's it's. It just knows. It just tells you to take over, basically. Yeah. So it, it it'll just queue up right behind the vehicle. Just see that there's an object in the road. Yeah. It'll queue up right behind it and it'll just stop. Okay. Until eyes the operator will take over. Got and it. Guide it around that vehicle. Got it. Um, so are you pretty much taking every ride you do, or are you pretty much taking over the wheel at some point? I mean, it just depends on like the time of day, the situations, um, like all of those unloading trucks are a huge, huge thing. Um, and that's like, we're, we're still developing the technology, so those things just help us understand, you know, when the car should um, go around an object versus when it shouldn't. Yeah. You know, again, such a complex um, situation. Yeah. When's it appropriate to do it and when's it not appropriate to do it. Yeah, makes sense. And what are you doing and what are you looking at? Me? Yeah. Um, this is like exactly what the car sees. Yeah. Um, and like what the car's going, how the car's going to react to situations so that I can see that right before the car's going to do it. Um, so I'm just here to monitor it and then if it does take over, I. I'll make a comment about that so we can send it back to the engineers. Cool. Yeah, she's like the perfect second set of eyes. Like yeah. she'll she'll tell me if uh, the car is gonna act uh, maybe irregular to a situation or may not understand how to act in a situation, and she can let me know ahead of time. That way, I can make the ride as smooth as possible, especially if there's a passenger inside. So, or if the car is doing something that it should be doing, like nudging this car, like we are properly nudging it, so I can see that we are going to do that. Yeah. Cool. Strip district. I haven't been down here in years. Yeah. Still the same. Fun Still busy. Times. Always busy. Always busy. Yep. Just selling stuff everywhere. This is where I used to get my cheese, <laughs> olives. Great pizza spot. All the Steelers gear you can imagine. Oh, I know. It's like this perfect game day clothing. It's like you need a shirt. Just hey, let's go down the strip. Get for me like ten bucks or something. Yeah, it's all like illegal. <laughs> yeah, straight exactly. from China. This is great. It's like this place. Cotton. Yeah. 
like yeah. direct from China. This place, cheapest cheapest produce ever. Straight from China. Straight from China. <laughs> everything, everything here basically has come from China. You should just say direct from China. This direct, whole place should be called this whole direct place, from China. Straight from China. Very flammable. <laughs> Very flammable. Look at this. All from China. What are you doing? He's just chilling there, drinking a drink. Doesn't even care. Yeah, so all the reason why I took over there is that vehicle just got a little too close. And this guy stopped right here. Or he was stopped right there. <laughs> when did you guys start um, driving around autonomously and uh, in the area? About a year ago. We just yeah, we have started the year. Yeah, we officially launched you know, our uh, SDUs, uh, picking up people, September of last year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, about a year ago. About a year ago. But they were driving around before then. Yeah. So we were, uh, at one point, we were only able to make, like, one loop around um, our first building, which we call, which is down the strip. We only do that one loop now, you know, a year or so later. Now we're picking up people, you know, in like Lawrenceville, Bloomfield, Shady Side, South Yeah, you're picking people all over, all over, and dropping them off all over, kind of. Yeah, pretty, pretty much anything that's within our... Uh, our uh, little bubble, so. Yeah, but you don't go like to the airport or anything? Not yet. No, we're working working on getting the rest of everywhere mapped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it's mainly a expanding. mapping problem that's causing? Um, that's causing us to not be able to go to the airport? Yeah, or, just, or everywhere, yeah. Um, yeah, we just are expanding them. Um, every day we're expanding them, so I mean it's we're working on it for sure. And can you tell me about how like there's like there are like autonomous vehicles all around here, like behind us. Yeah. How does how does like what we learn from this car um, change what the car behind us does? Does it real time? Um, like do they interact with each other? No. Like, well, like in the cars? sense of like, do do you, does this pick up something new and it, in real time change it for the car behind us? Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Um, they don't, like, work, like, with each other um, in that sense at all. So, basically, like, the car's working on this map, right, and the map is constant, um, and then the, what's around us changes. Um, the interactions change, the, the cars beside us change, um, and the way that we're going to react to those situations is constant um, with the car that we're in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And um, what are the sensors aside? So this spinning thing is a lidar. Yeah, it's lidar. What What are the other sensors that are being used here? Um, we have some radar. Yep, we um, have radar in the front and the back. We also have, of course, GPS, so we know where yeah. we're driving from. So, and then uh, the cameras up on the platform, along with the lidar, um, that reads uh, helps read the states of the lights for the car. So, it understands if it's green, it can go red. So, it's a combination of things to help, you know, you know navigate the vehicle through the city. Yeah. So on this, what is the red? The red thing is like a kill switch, or yes, yeah, essentially. I, I call it like um, the on-off switch. So you have to have that closed in order for the entire circuit to um, cycle to go through. Yeah. Um, like if you think about it in electricity. Yeah. Um, and so the silver so. button is engage. Correct. Exactly. And um, do you feel like over the past year it's gotten meaningfully better? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah it's been. It was. It was not that great at the beginning. That it was a little bumpy. I will say it was a little <laughs> bumpy, but it was definitely. If we didn't take those bumps in the beginning, we wouldn't be where we are today. Yeah. I mean, we went from a fusion to a very very nice Volvo. Yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely come a long way. It, it definitely. Has. 
it. It's definitely become more human-like, too, um, and, and less robotic, <clears throat> excuse me, as the time has progressed, which is amazing. Cool. What were you guys doing before you joined Uber? I was a calibration technician. Okay. I worked at a courthouse. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I, did, I have a tech background. I should have let you go first. So. <laughs> <laughs> So this was like very up my alley when I moved here. So I've been only here. I've been here for about a year. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know my way around the city, so this job was like a perfect opportunity for me to actually learn and understand the city because it's because it's Pittsburgh. It's, it's so unique. Yeah. Know? And one thing I've learned since I've lived here is that you can you get from point A to point B, but there may be like ten to fifteen different ways to get from point A to point B. Yeah. yeah. You ever had people that are like super scared and uh, any issues? There's always going to be those skeptics. Um, my favorite thing is picking up people that aren't from here, and the best, even better than that, is the people that have no idea what this is. So like their friends will order the Uber, and they are <laughs> you know from I don't even know where that they don't know what this is. And um, I, I another planet. They don't know what yeah, a self-driving car is. I specifically remember this one instance, and she was like, "What am I? What is? Why am I getting into this car?" And, like, and he's like, "Come on, it'll be fun. Like, let's go." And um, she's like, "What is this?" And it's so cool. Um, you know, I don't want to say they're scared, but they just don't know. And then once they're in the car, they realize like how safe this car actually is. You know, it's it's seeing things that we don't even see sometimes. You know, a human just can't possibly see all of that at the same time. Um, I know at night the car works amazing because people will be dressed in black and you have no idea that they're coming out in front of that car. You know, it's dark. Yeah. But the, you know, our lighter's picking it up and we're seeing their trajectory and where they're going and and being able to react to that is amazing. Yeah, it's cool. It's pretty smooth now. So it it was it used to be really jerky or. Uh... I would just say like more robotic. Yeah, it makes sense. It gets just, yeah, improves over time. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah. developing. And just dramatically. How many cars are on the road now? Um, over two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah, we support here Pittsburgh, and we also support Phoenix. Yeah. So. And it's all the XC90s. All XC90s. Yep. But every once in a while, you get just like one of those zingers that you just don't know how to answer. What's for, what's a good one? For so for me, that like I will never forget this. But I picked up a passenger, and he jumped into the car, and the first thing I asked is, "So, what's the difference between a self-driving car and a regular Uber?" <laughs> like, well, where do we start? Uh, it, it was like. I had to look at my co-pilot. I'm like, can you help me? Uh, <laughs> you got my back. It's like, it, 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 it's self-driving. It drives itself. <laughs> it drives, it drives itself. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sometimes they don't even realize they're getting picked up by a self-driving Uber. Mm -hmm. And they'll even see it, they, that they, because on the app, it'll tell you that if you get paired with a self-driving Uber or not. Yeah. And they will, and they'll, and they'll stay right there on the app, and they still won't realize it until the car actually pulls up and sees that, that, that's, Spinning lighter up top. It's like, wait, wait, is this one of the self-driving cars? It's like, it sure is. <laughs> That's exactly what this <laughs> is. That's cool. However, did you know? I never would have thought like a simple question like that would stop me. So, nice. I don't know if you saw that. Um, that person just swerved in. Yeah, I mean, they came in. They had the turn signal on, and. Um, uh, Jeremy was absolutely ready just to be courteous and let them through, but uh, the car actually reacted perfectly. And and as soon as we saw that they were coming in, we put a nice little brake on and allowed them to go. Then Um, I work for a venture capital firm. 
just I invest primarily in uh, financial technology startups. They're not really related at all. <laughs> but I live I live in San Francisco, actually, right by the Uber office. Okay. What was that? Why did um, that? Why did we get that jerk there? Just all that construction there with all the uh, uh, people standing around there. Uh, we're really, really. sensitive to um, <clears throat> pedestrians. Yeah. So they move just a little bit, um, and then they have that cone in their hand and everything. So our car's like, are they going to walk in front of us? Let's just make sure they're not going to before we proceed. So once the, those people move, um, a trajectory line is produced by the car so it can predict what they're going to do. I was a bit aggressive with that traffic light. Um, actually, the car takes into consideration like the distance that it has versus the speed that it's going. Yeah. Um, if we can get into the intersection, um, so the traffic light, the traffic light interactions with the cars are pretty amazing. Um, I knew I know that light specifically is six seconds long. <laughs> <laughs> but uh. Yeah, so long as we're in the intersection um, in yellow, we're clear to proceed through. So definitely much more human-like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> any uh, any run-ins with the police or anything like that? No. Not that I, okay. No, not really. Um, they, or they just like to follow us because they're so curious. So there was um, one... Even now when they've been on the road for so long? Um, I'm not too sure. I know that I had talked to a police officer at Chipotle the one day and he said that he was following one for an hour and he was for like for certain that they the people in the car thought that they were going to get pulled over um he said he was just genuinely curious of like how the car re would react to stuff and, and um he's like I had no intention of pulling them over no matter what I just wanted to see what was going on that's cool yeah I think that more than anything they're just genuinely curious So you did you just engage that? I did that. So I was so I got let them cross. Oh, okay. You're just being courteous, but yeah. the car. Otherwise, it might not have been. Yeah. As... So, the, so the car probably would just proceed it forward because there was no trajectory line like, being produced by the pedestrians. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. If they had started to move, then the car would probably yep. stop. Exactly. But because they were just standing still, you're like might as well let them go. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. That makes sense. Yep. And then they even gave us like a thumbs up and then that's good you know interactions with the public they're just saying like hey yeah the, you know nobody else would stop for us but that uber did yeah so it just even looks good you know just to the people that are around us so we probably would have made that but it's so we've been a little close yeah i guess that's another courteous thing you don't want yeah. the uber to cut off yeah Cool. Thanks, guys.